Welcome back once again to beautiful Jerry Richardson Indoor Stadium and another edition of Inside Wofford Basketball with Wofford women's coach Jimmy Garrity. I would say Happy New Year. Is there a statute of limitations on how late you can say Happy New Year, but a belated Happy New Year too? Yeah, I appreciate that. No, no statute of limitations for you, Jim. But uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, we've uh, the new year is rolling and right into conference play, so um, it's going to go come fast. And before you know it, we'll be uh, halfway through the season. When last we spoke, you were getting ready to, to finish your gauntlet of power fives. You got yeah. through that. You you stand right now at nine and seven, one and one in conference play. Yeah. There's so much buildup to conference play. How ready were your players to jump right into it? Yeah, well, you know, we, we try to build our non-conference schedule to prepare us for conference play. You know, there's some that we won't be favored in. There's some that are 50-50 games and then some we will be favored in. So, um, you know, it's we're, we're pretty fired up to finally get to January and to start playing our conference play. And, of course, uh, started uh, this past week and anxious for the rest of the season to get here. All right, well, we come back, we'll talk about those first two conference games on the road for the Terriers. We'll also look ahead to that big rivalry game with Furman this weekend and talk a little bit about international recruiting and how many different languages Jimmy has had to learn over the years. It's all next here on Inside Wofford Basketball. It's the moment you dream of, the moment you work for, train for, run wind sprints when nobody's watching for, the moment when hours of gym time, court time, prep time, all culminate into this time. The moment when millions of bounces, blocks, and boards all add up to this, your moment. Ingalls, we're with you every step of the way. You're true blue, up before the sun. The men and women we count on every day. And you count on your Carolina Ford dealers so you can be ready for what's next. Stay focused and connected. Help inspire a generation. And when you need us most, we're here for you. Get 1.9% financing for 72 months with up to 4150 package savings on select Ford trucks only at your Carolina Ford dealer. And welcome back to Inside Wofford Basketball, brought to you by Yokohama. So it all began at UNC Greensboro, Fleming Gym, tough place yeah. to play. Schedule Maker didn't do you any favors with two road games to start off. Talk about the UNCG game. I know a slow start was something you were trying to avoid. That's a very good team in a very tough environment. But when that thing started off, and you started off a little bit slow, how, yeah. how much of a worry was that for you? Yeah, you know, you always want to get off to a really good start. Um, um, it was a little bit slow, but UNCG is a really good team. They are super talented. Um, they get up the floor. Um, they play great defense. Uh, transition, they're probably one of the fastest teams we'll play. Mm -hmm. um, but I was really proud of our effort for coming back. I think we took the lead in the third, and I think we took the lead in the fourth, too, midway. Uh, but down the stretch, um, UNCG made a little bit more plays than, than we obviously made. I, I thought, uh, watching the game, I thought one of the keys was you never got that extended yeah. run that that puts you over the top. You, like I said, you took the lead a couple of times, yeah. but it wasn't like you could string together a, 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 a 10 to nothing run yeah. or, or a 14 to 2 run. Yeah, And that's to their credit. They're a very yeah. good defensive team. Yeah, give UNCG all the credit on that. Um, they guarded our stuff really well, and we didn't get many second-chance opportunities, mm -hmm. too. And um, and then we didn't get to the free-throw line very often as well, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, ultimately, it came down to them making more plays than we did. Rachel Rose was Rachel Rose. This yeah. might be a theme for all our broadcasts mm -hmm. this season, by the way. Uh, 26 points, 12 rebounds, five assists. Um, the secondary, the number two, the number three person who helped her out. Um, yeah. We talked last show about how it's often a different person every yeah. day. Is it going to take a while for that to sort out? Are you comfortable with the fact that it could be a different girl every night? Yeah, I think um, I'm comfortable with that. We, I mean, we have really good players, and each night, any one of them can step up mm -hmm. uh, would we love you know definitely you can count on four to five that are going to get double digits um probably not going to happen right now but uh but again we're, we're, we're really talented annabelle schultz have been playing really well mm -hmm. um and then maddie has played well too as a freshman um and then we're just getting contributions for from everybody and i think each night 
any one of those can have a big night. So it was a 67-58 loss in the opener, and then you go right back over the mountain yeah. and go to Cullowee, North Carolina, and a weekend game with Western Carolina. That was the team that dealt you your first conference loss yeah. last year in kind of an upset. But unlike Thursday night, you get off to a great early start. You're hitting threes. I think Annabelle hit, hit her first three, <laughs> yeah. and that seemed to set the tone for that game. It did. I think it just relaxed everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Annabelle, I think, scored her first nine points. She was three for three. They had to get a timeout. Um, and we were pretty fired up about that. And I think our mindset going into that game um, after the tough loss uh, Thursday to UNCG with only a day to prepare for mm-hmm. Western. Uh, and you know what a tough place that place is to play the Ramsey Center. And um, But I think our mindset was just right. And uh, we were relaxed. We, we, we weren't pressed at all. And uh, we felt confident going in there. And, of course, when you're confident and then you make shots, it just – you know, it trickles down to the next person and the next person. But but we shot the ball really well. There's something about Annabelle, uh, the Asheville native, when she heads out west, she yeah. always seems to play well. Yeah. Rachel, what more can we say? 33 points. Uh, we'll talk about her awards in a moment. But yeah. in terms of those first two conference games, you're freshmen and you're yeah. playing a lot of them. Do they now understand a little bit how different conference basketball is from non-conference basketball? Very interesting because we talked about that leading up to UNCG. And, you know, you hear it and you hear it, um, but until you experience it, it's just different. And I think after the experience on the road in a tough environment at Fleming against a really good, well-coached team in UNC Greensboro, um, I think then it finally hit them. They understood. And that's why I think going into Cullowee, um, which is a tough place to play, um, I think we were ready for it from, from that previous experience Thursday night. Yeah, kind of play. You're, you get to the point where you're, you're playing yourselves sometimes. Yeah. It, it's, it's like, how are we going to respond? X's yeah. and O's and scouting reports matter. But, yeah, yeah you don't know until you felt it. And, and let's, let's get right to it. Rachel Rose, 33 points. She's been named Southern Conference Player of the Week six weeks. Yeah. They ought to just retire for her and Woolbright on the men's side for Western. Just retire the award in their name. I mean, she is the focal point of every team's scouting yeah. report. You know they're saying, if you stop Rose, we have a chance to beat Wofford. Yeah. And nobody's stopping her. Why? Well, she's just – her heart is really the mm-hmm. biggest thing. Like, um, she's a tough, tough player. She's obviously super talented. Um, she can score it at all three levels. Uh, but honestly, it's her heart. Mm-hmm. Um, she's just built a little different than most. And, um, you know, she's got the competitive um, nature to her game. Uh, she plays with a little bit of chip on her shoulder. Um, and she's playing with a lot of confidence, too. But her teammates, you ask her, she's going to be the first one to tell you mm-hmm. her teammates are helping her out and getting her open and allowing her to play the way that she can play. And she was just named to the Beck and Har- Becky Harmon yeah. Mid-Major Player of the Year watch list. So keep an eye out for that as the year progresses. She's getting a lot of national attention. I know there have been some other yeah. websites that are starting to notice. So individual success is great, but I like it because it brings attention to the team program as well. Absolutely. And all that um, recognition is, is so well-deserved. Mm-hmm. But, to, yeah, it, you know, it brings recognition to our program, which is always good. All right. When we come back, big one here on this court behind us this weekend. We'll preview the Furman matchup and also talk about international recruiting. It's next here on Inside Wofford Basketball. Black and gold. Bold. A victory story about to be told. Grit, toughness, and tenacity. A hub of hard work in Hub City. We're on these wins like dogs on a bone. In the zone. Our place, in your face, won't leave you alone. Strength, speed, fire, true. I'm sorry, do these things trouble you? We're Wofford College. We fly the W. Ingles, proud partner of the Wofford Terriers. 
Welcome back to Inside Wofford Basketball, brought to you by Yokohama. I'm Jim Noble. All right, Jimmy Garrity, three straight at home. That, yeah. that, that's nice. And it all begins Saturday and a big one. It's always, always noteworthy when Furman comes to town. This is a little different. They've got a new head coach, Pierre Curtis, yeah. takes over. Um, how does that change the equation in terms of what kind of team to expect coming in here? Yeah, well, Pierre's done a fantastic job. Um, you know, last year they had the injury bug. This year they got all those players back. They are really talented and really good. Um, they're the same tough, firm and team that they've always been rebounding, right? They rebound the ball really well. They're scoring it really well this year, too. Um, they run some great actions. Um, and, you know, it's a rivalry game. And I think it's important for our players to know that and embrace it. Mm -hmm. um, so we talk about that a little bit and um, you know, no doubt it's going to take our best effort um, to be in the game on Saturday and hopefully uh, our minds are right and we come in with the right mindset. You swept the Paladins last year for the yeah. first time in school history. Does that in any way change the way your players view Furman or maybe do you think it changes the way the, the Furman players view the Terriers in a way? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Both teams know each other really, really well. <laughs> Um, I don't think that has much to do with this year's game um, and this season's team and versus last year. So it's two different teams, um, and uh, you know they're going to come in here ready to play. There's going to be no doubt that they're going to come in here ready to play. Um, everybody wants to win. Yep. Winning's tough, and um, so but you're going to have two teams out there that's going to battle, and both are going to want to win. And whoever rebounds the ball, take care, takes care of it, and ultimately makes more plays than the other team is probably going to come out on top. And obviously after that, you've got two more home games against two very yeah. good teams. You've got Mercer and Sanford coming in. I want to talk to you a little bit about, more about atmosphere. Um, yeah. you got some freshmen on campus here that haven't really been out for a women's game because yeah. of breaks and all the time yeah. you guys have spent away from home. Um, how much does that matter when, when your student athletes run out on the court? Well, the student section is rocking and there's people in the stands. Yeah, it's always a comfortable environment for our players to play um, in your home uh, coliseum. So, um, you know, we're, we're, when we come out and the cheerleaders are there, the band is rocking, the students are there. Uh, men's basketball has their little section right here <laughs> cheering us on. They take all the really good seats, I've noticed. <laughs> well, it just fires us up, yeah. and everybody wants to play in that type of environment, and um, I think we'll have a, a pretty good environment here on Saturday. All right. In closing, I want to talk about this. I've been meaning to talk to you about this forever, um, but it just it, it's striking this year. You know, We've talked a lot about five freshmen on this yeah. year's roster. We haven't talked so much about all the international players. And uh, it, First of all, thanks for recruiting all these names that I <laughs> have to pronounce so we're gonna have to we need more players named helen uh, well, when yeah. we go in the international but uh obviously a couple players from new zealand helen matthews and, and bana tuliave uh you've got yika chryswick from the netherlands and sara data from croatia tell mm -hmm. me about how that process starts it's it's hard to recruit the southeast yeah in terms of time and resources much less to re recruit the entire globe how does an international player first show up on your radar well sometimes the international recruits are because there's a great need for for that particular position and you know all the coaching staff you know we got a wonderful coaching staff that has a lot of contacts throughout you know obviously the u.s but internationally as well too um, and we get several people contacting us and we'll reach back out. You always just have to stay in constant contact with all, um, all those um, individuals. And um, it's worked out well for us. Um, we get film sent, we get more film, and then we try to get them on the phone because ultimately at, at the end of the day, if they're great basketball players but don't fit the culture of Wofford mm -hmm. and the college, great academics too, um, then it's not worth pursuing. So there's a lot of boxes that have to be checked, and it's really speed tracked. And we've done a really good job so far. You can't say, hey, listen, there's a player in Hawaii I really yeah, want to I recruit. Know, right? I think you should send Jimmy out there on the private plane. I mean, yeah. you have to do a lot of it, I guess, with Zoom and, yeah. and talk to parents and things like that. You have to deal with language barriers. And yep. is, is there international red tape, paper? 
the work that, that goes into all that too? Well, there is a little bit, you know, getting them into uh, Wofford mm-hmm. and the admissions process and, and that, uh, you know, we have great admission people that work with us, but you're on a time restraint too. You, mm-hmm. you got to hurry that stuff along and they've been great with us. So it's been really smooth. Well, I volunteer to recruit like the Caribbean, you know, yeah. and Hawaii, whenever, you know, you know, Europe in July, things yeah. like that. But it's it's been great to see them assimilate here on campus. And like you said, I think a bigger part of the story is more how they fit into the school. Basketball is yeah. great. Basketball may be the reason that they're yeah. here, but the Wofford experience and yeah. the academics, in the grand picture of things, that's that's almost a bigger deal. We won't sacrifice any of that. Mm-hmm. And they fit our culture. They're great teammates to one another, really good students and good basketball players. So um, we're, we're very fortunate to have them as a part of our program. All right. Well, we're fortunate to look forward to three great home games coming up. Can't wait to see you out here at Jerry Richardson Indoor Stadium. And best of luck. Beat those Paladins. Three little home cooking here. Yeah. And uh, we will see you in a couple of weeks. We'll do our best. Yeah. All right. For Jimmy Garrity. I'm Jim Noble. Always a pleasure having you on Inside Wofford Basketball. We'll see you next time.